Hello everybody and welcome to the Empowered Psychology Podcast. Today is episode 12 and part 7 of my Lupus Conquered Testimony. And we have Dr. Ja back with us, my amazing rheumatologist. And today we are going to educate y'all about arthritis. Now, I'm going to recap a little bit on um, part six. So in part six, I talked about my second flare, Mm -hmm. which was horrible. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. And um, you fixed it. You know, it was a year of hell and neglect. It was like I had to go to so many different doctors. And Mm -hmm. I finally got the help I needed. And in one month, I was fine. I mean, it, it, there's there's a lot of unanswered questions, and before we get into those details, I want to first educate our audience about what arthritis is. So, question number one: What what is arthritis? Right. So, arthritis is pain in the joints, and it can happen for different reasons. The most common one is osteoarthritis. So that happens as we get older. Um, It can run in families. It usually happens, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, when we're much older in life, when we've had wear and tear on our joints. It can happen if patients are overweight, like if they have um, a higher body mass index, then they're kind of carrying extra weight around. It can kind of cause wear and tear on the knees, the hips, those kind of joints can get worn down. Or if you've had a sports injury or some type of damage to a joint, sometimes those joints can get osteoarthritis earlier because it's sustained that injury Um, and you just don't have as much kind of cartilage or cushioning between the joints anymore so it can cause pain discomfort and you know can cause disfiguration Um, the other type of arthritis is inflammatory arthritis so that means your immune system is attacking your joints Um, so that's the type of arthritis that we see in lupus we also see that type of arthritis in rheumatoid arthritis and other conditions like psoriatic arthritis Um, ankylosing spondylitis is a disease that can affect the spine and cause inflammation there but can also affect your joints too Um, and then there's several other diseases where it can also show up so that's the kind of arthritis that you see most commonly in lupus can you kind of describe the anatomy of your joints to give the audience like a bigger picture of like how your joints function you know what they look like the joints are where your two bones meet each other and so this is like one bone this is another bone and there's usually fluid or cushioning in between. So there's cartilage, which is kind of like a softer tissue, and then there's synovial fluid, um, which is kind of a liquid that kind of helps keep your joints lubricated, and so that kind of runs through. And so when you have inflammation in your joints, like with rheumatoid arthritis or with inflammatory arthritis and lupus, the synovium gets inflamed, and so you get a lot more um, extra fluid there and a lot more of your immune system cells that normally go and fight an infection. They show up in your joint and they cause damage and destruction because they get confused and think that they're attacking an outside invader. And so that can cause a lot of swelling and extra fluid, like your knee can get really, really puffy and painful and swollen and get, cause difficulty walking, or it can even cause damage to the bone. So it can kind of eat away at the edges of the bones and that can be really Really painful. What are the symptoms of arthritis? So with inflammatory arthritis, the symptoms we ask about are pain, like which joints are affected, um, and morning stiffness. So you wake up in the morning feeling really stiff all over, like an old person, like it's really hard to get moving. You feel kind of stuck or rigid. And then as you get moving, um, it kind of improves. So that rigidity or stiffness is kind of an important component of arthritis. And then swelling of the joints is another important aspect that we look for on exam. And we also ask patients, a lot of patients will tell me that oh my rings don't fit anymore I can't get them over my fingers because they're so swollen or my feet are my shoes are not fitting on my feet those kind of things what causes arthritis and then why is it so common amongst lupus patients Yeah, so basically it's your immune system attacking the joints, causing that pain, stiffness, um, swelling, inflammation, and sometimes destruction. Uh, We don't completely know why, you know, it happens, but it's just a common manifestation. It's an area that the um, immune system, you know, kind of favors, and there's just certain parts like the synovium that it likes to attack. So now that we understand what arthritis is, what symptoms arthritis causes, and you know what may cause arthritis, um, in my opinion, and I could be wrong, um, but 
I feel like this is like the worst symptom for all lupus patients. Yeah, I, d- I definitely agree because it affects your quality of life. So you really are not able to kind of get dressed. You're not able to go exercise. You're not able to even just function on a day-to-day basis, opening jars, bottles. It affects everything. And living with pain is hard for anybody. And especially lupus patients are going through so much. And um, to add on pain, stiffness, swelling, you know, is really, really tough. And it affects every single movement, everything you're trying to do on your daily life. Yes, and it also impacts your sleep. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can't even lay down. You can't even sleep. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, it really just impacts your quality Mm -hmm. of life. Um, So, I did some research. I, I may be wrong, but I feel like you need, this needs to be treated quickly. Because, um, I think I read that once the fluid, like, runs out, it's over, right? Um, basically, you know, that chronic inflammation can cause a lot of damage and Mm -hmm. the cartilage can wear, you know, from chronic inflammation. And so it's a good idea to be treated right away for that, to help improve your pain as well as to help prevent damage to your joints. Um, lupus patients can sometimes get like tendons, get really lax, and that can sometimes be irreversible. They usually don't have the level of destruction of the joints that you might see in rheumatoid arthritis. That can get really bad, um, but they can have kind of chronic deformities where their fingers are just not the same and they're kind of their tendons are different. And, you know, so damage can be done and can be irreversible. So that's why it's important to treat these things to help give you quality of life as well as to prevent long-term damage to the joints to some joints can get kind of stuck in a certain way you can't kind of bend them all the way and those kind of things it can be really hard the effects sometimes are reversible and sometimes aren't so in my case um it was bad i mean Mm -hmm. it it was bad it was starting to affect my joints but as you can see (laughs) it was reversible so like what when does it get to a point where it isn't irreversible uh, it depends on what's going on, but basically if people have long-standing inflammation or really aggressive disease that's been untreated, that can often lead to chronic damage. Um, usually people who are without insurance, who haven't seen doctors, who haven't been on any treatment at all, those are the patients at higher risk. So um, those are the ones we worry the most about, but it can happen to some patients if they're just not on the right treatment or if you know there aren't enough treatment. Um, yeah. So yeah, guys, um, timing is super important and also um, getting the right treatment. Um, So the golden question, is arthritis a treatable problem? Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah, we have a lot of options for treatment. Um, We definitely, you know, look at what is going on with the patient, try different treatments, see, you know, what is needed to help get them under better control. We usually start with prednisone or steroids to kind of calm things down quickly um, if patients can tolerate it. And then we'll try medications like disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs. So those are pill medications um, that can kind of control arthritis. And if those are not working, then we go up to the biologic medicines, which are usually injections or infusions. Um, And those can often be pretty strong. They suppress the immune system. They get the inflammation under control. They help prevent your immune system from attacking the joints like they're doing. And sometimes we have to try one and then another if somebody is not responding the way we would expect. So it can be a little bit of trial and error just because every patient is so different. And sometimes the disease is very strong and aggressive to where we need to try different treatments and kind of figure out what works best for that patient. So it can be hard. But we, but we do know yeah. that it is treatable. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. I, I'm so happy to be sharing yeah. this because I don't wish this pain on anybody. Yeah like anybody and as we know there are people in bed right now Mm -hmm. who are in pain for no reason Mm -hmm. for no reason and um it it has to stop i have a new saying it has to stop but it will stop yeah it will stop so um yes guys arthritis is a treatable problem okay so now that we know that arthritis is treatable and you kind of shared a little bit about what treatments you use to treat arthritis um can you share your methods for putting an end to this horrible symptom for your patients like do you i know you shared a little bit but do you Mm -hmm. have have you found any like specific medication like a method that seems to work for most of your patients 
It's really individualized. I mean, we follow kind of the standard guidelines um, Mm -hmm. in terms of what medications we try first, which ones we try second, Um, but it really can depend patient to patient. Um, So yeah, usually we just start with the disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, then we work up to the biologics, and then we try different biologics, and we usually go by, you know, what medication says the patient tried before, did it work for them before, is it worth kind of bringing it back, Um, and so it just depends on kind of each patient, Um, but yeah, we have a lot of options out there and there are newer and newer medications coming out um, but yeah some patients you know if they have very severe pain due to other reasons they have like damage to their joints sometimes we don't get 100% results and we have to work with pain specialists to kind of get people to where they have good quality of life but many patients we can get their inflammation under control and get their pain under control if we can get to them early enough and try different medications so Okay. Yeah. So it all depends on the person, mm-hmm. yeah. which just kind of highlights how complex lupus is, mm-hmm. you know, and how, again, you're a genius because you kind of have to like figure things <laughs> out because you have everyone, everyone looks so different. So, guys, it's really important to have an amazing rheumatologist. And that kind of goes into my next question um, because, as we know, um, of course, amazing doctors like you are going to do their jobs, but we as patients have to do our jobs as well. So what are the ways patients can ensure they stay in remission uh, from arthritis? Well, I think firstly, most important is, you know, take care of your health, um, mm-hmm. you know, eat healthy, exercise, get good restful sleep. Those are all really important aspects um, to just taking care of yourself on a day-to-day basis. And then seeing your doctor regularly, getting your labs checked, getting your um, physical exam. That way we can make sure if your joints are doing well or not, um, because we check how many joints are swollen, how many are painful. Um, and that's really important for us to know kind of how active your disease is. And we can only help treat you if we see you regularly. So usually I say every three months with my lupus patients. Sometimes we can go, you know, six months or a year if they're doing great, but usually we need labs about every three months just to make sure everything's okay. But it's different for every patient. We just got to, you know, come up with a plan together and stay in touch if you have new symptoms. Okay, guys. So we just provided you with a basic overview of arthritis. Um, It's super complex. I was talking with Dr. Jaw. There are so many different arthritis and, you know, I'm I'm sure you treat so many autoimmune diseases and Mm -hmm. they all manifest in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is that we know that um, there is treatment Mm -hmm. for this illness. So based on, you know, my personal story, um, I just have a question for you, which you may not even have the answers, but I'm very confused about why... Your philosophy was so different and the other doctors. And the reason I want to bring this up is because there's people going through this right now who have bought into this lie. Um, for a year, I was going to the doctors. Like, they were just telling me, like, this is how lupus is. Like, some days are going to be good. Some days are going to be bad. Um, yeah, this is just how it is. We don't know what to do. Like, you, you, um, you here's your Celebrix, you know, here. Like, And then also um, towards, like, the end before I went to you, um, they were, that's when they were like, okay, well, you need to go see pain management. Mm-hmm. And that's when I knew, like, okay, I need to get out of here. Like, I have to go get help. So what, what's, what's happening? Like, do you think it's because of maybe, like, you trained at Baylor? Maybe they have a different philosophy? But wh- why is this happening? Uh, it's hard to know. I mean, I think... What's important is to go by the evidence and, you know, if somebody is having inflammation in their joints, then that means the treatment's not working. And so, you know, then you try a different treatment. Um, Mm -hmm. If you feel like the treatment's working and they don't have any swelling in their joints, they don't have, you know, the stiffness that you expect, they don't have any other manifestations of active lupus, then that's when we get to a point where, okay, maybe the pain is not from the lupus and maybe it's more from, you know, more osteoarthritis or is it more fibromyalgia pains is it other types of pains that we need to treat in different modalities and so that's where it can be kind of tricky to kind of tease out the specifics and so um you know that's the most important thing is just trying to figure out what is the root cause of the pain and then how do we treat that and so that can that's where we can differ at times that some people may think it's fibromyalgia pain when you know actually it was the lupus causing the pain so we needed to go down that pathway but you know it's it's a journey and you know we don't always get it right on the first try which is why we have to work together with you know our patients and say is this treatment working well are we getting the results that we're hoping for or do we need to try a different path yes so 
Um, just so grateful that you have your philosophy and it works. So, um, you know, I remember when I came to you, by, by this point I was fed up because I think I went to like seven doctors before you. And I remember like I told you in a nice way. You know, because I was just so hopeful. I was like, I finally, like, this is the one. I'm going to get the help I need. Like, I advocated for myself, and I told you, mm-hmm. um, Dr. John, I need a graduate. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I need I need to live my life. Mm-hmm. I cannot live like this anymore because mm-hmm. um, I couldn't. It just doesn't combat with my personality. And even if you don't have a super outgoing personality, nobody should have to experience this. Mm-hmm. And so I remember I was like, Dr. John, I can't live like this. And I, like, advocated for myself and, like, you you immediately like listen to me and you even the next day you know you call me and you're like this is what this is this is what that is I know I'm gonna get a reply within like 24 hours so for the patients right now who are going through adversity who are like the doctors are neglecting them like how do you encourage people to advocate for themselves you know because you understand the healthcare system you understand what patients are going through so how can someone who's in a bad situation right now how can they advocate for themselves yeah it's it's tough um you definitely have to speak up you definitely have to ask questions you have to um, figure out the best way to communicate with your doctor with their team of um, staff that they work with um and you know just if you're unhappy with your care you get a second opinion if you feel like um things are not going well, you know, you just ask questions and, you know, discuss what's going on. And, you know, you can always switch to a different doctor if for some reason things are not going well. Um, But it's it's a team effort. Definitely you got to make sure you're on the same page and that you're meeting regularly and kind of figuring things out together and getting other specialists involved if ever you're needing it. Yes. Yeah. But it's it's tough. It's really tough to be a patient. You have to speak up. You have to, you know, ask the right questions and figure out, you know, what are your priorities and yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, sorry. So many Valentine's Day messages. Um, <laughs> okay, so um another thing I wanna say, um, you're not crazy. Uh, I just want to say that uh, when you're experiencing these pains, uh arthritis pains, um, it's real. If you're you're how are you don't let anyone tell you that you're crazy because how are you crazy if you can't even like get up and brush your hair like how like so don't let anybody ever tell you that um stand firm and what you feel and as you all can see it took me seven times but i finally got to the gem who saved my life like i write five things i'm grateful for every day and every day like i just write you because um i i like I'm just so happy every day. Like, I know this was, like, so horrible to go through, and I don't ever want to go through it again. But I'm grateful because um, now I can really advocate for people and, you know, give this valuable information. And I am an example of how to um, live like that. And I'm just laughing because, like, every day I, I jump out of bed. And when I, like, my friends are there, they're like, why are you always jumping out of bed? <laughs> I'm like, uh, because of what I went can. through. Because yeah, I can. Yeah, awesome. Like, I'm always jumping around and stuff. Yeah. So I'm very, very happy about that. Okay. And today I told Dr. Ja, um, also I want to just say this. You never know what people are going through. For a year, um, I was going through hell and nobody knew. Nobody knew. And, like, I'm usually very vocal, like, about like to the people I love, like I don't have a problem telling them like, hey, something's happening to me. But there was just too many ups and downs. Like my flare was like, there was no in between Dr. Joe. I was like, one day I didn't have pain mm-hmm. and I would take advantage of that day and jump out of bed and go to school, just do whatever. And then the days where I had pain, it was like, okay, I couldn't do anything. So I didn't really want to tell people because I was like, um, I don't know. I don't know where I am, you mm-hmm. know, so why would I scare my friends? Mm-hmm. But I was in so much pain physically that I did not even notice my hair had fallen out. Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't until I saw you and then I graduated and I'm getting ready for graduation. I'm like, what happened to my hair? You know, so um, it was hard, y'all. It was really hard. Um, and speak up. Don't be afraid. But, um, you know, going through lupus is hard. But today, I'm saying, like, you never know what people are going through. So 
you know, um, yes, my hair is poofy right now, but I, this is a celebration of life, in my opinion. Like, my hair is growing mm -hmm. back out. Like, it's growing back out. And sooner or later, I'm going to have my hair back. But you never know what people are going through. Mm -hmm. So that's something I'm very mindful of. Like, if someone's hair maybe looks bad or if their skin looks bad or if mm -hmm. they're walking slow, like, mm -hmm. I'm now very mindful. Like, yeah. okay, they could be going through something. And mm -hmm. as you know, like lupus patients, they go through things all the time. Mm -hmm. So I just want to shout out. But yes, my hair is growing back. I'm so excited. <laughs> I can finally put in a bun right. and a hair ponytail doesn't look as bad. So um, Dr. Joe, thank you so much um, yes. for being here again mm -hmm. and um, educating us about arthritis. Thank you for um, ending my year of hell. Um, guys, like it was crazy. Like in a month, I was fine, and I get to dance, and I get to do do my hair, do my makeup. I get to do like all the things that I love. So Good, I'm I want to thank you. That. Thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm. And guys, that is it for part seven of my lupus conquered testimony. Um, part eight uh, in the final part will be up on Friday, and this will be up today, Wednesday. So I'm very, very grateful, and I hope that um, y'all have taken something away from this video. And for all my lupus conquerors out there, um, take this information and go win, okay? Go find the help you need um, and know that there is treatment and that you can conquer lupus. You can, okay? Thank you, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Bye!